I want to talk to you about why technology projects in health and social care fail. The short answer is technology projects fail because we don't take sufficient account of complexity. The 21st century has seen a number of key trends. For example, the population is getting older and more frail. People with chronic conditions are surviving longer. There are more tests and treatments available and people's expectations are higher. But the amount of money available for health and social care is not enough. The solution to this mismatch between demand and supply is often assumed to be some kind of technology, perhaps a wearable device or an app or a remote monitoring system or a video link for telehealth or a gadget to calculate the dose of a drug in a condition that fluctuates. The development of technologies like these for supporting health and care programmes is an increasingly crowded space. Entrepreneurs, software companies, academic researchers and charities are developing technologies, perhaps with a view to making care more efficient, extending life or improving its quality, and perhaps with a view to making money. These are exciting times. There are many potentially useful technologies in the pipeline, but technological solutions in health and care are very rarely an unqualified success story. More often, the story is of promising beginnings, followed by disappointment. Specifically, there are five problems that recur again and again when someone tries to solve a health or care problem with a new technology. The first problem is non-adoption. People never use the technology. The second is abandonment. People use the technology for a little while and then stop. The third problem is failure of local scale-up. A small-scale demonstration project proves impossible to mainstream, even within a single organisation. The fourth problem is lack of distance spread. The technology becomes business as usual in, say, a single hospital, but it's never picked up anywhere else. And the fifth problem is lack of long-term sustainability. The technology is adopted initially, but a year or two later, nobody's using it. How do we reduce these five problems? There's no simple answer to that question, but there are some insights from the research literature. For one thing, we need to stop focusing on the isolated technology and shift our gaze towards the dynamic socio-technical system, that is the linked network of people and technologies, which evolves over time and which is often somewhat unstable. This socio-technical system has seven interacting domains, each of which can be simple, that is, made up of few components and highly predictable, as in making a sandwich, complicated, that is, multiple components but still largely predictable, as in building a rocket, or complex, that is, dynamic, composed of multiple interacting elements and unpredictable, as in raising a child. The more complexity there is in each domain, the more unstable and unpredictable the socio-technical system is, and the more prone the project is to fail. Let me talk you through the different domains. Domain one is the illness or condition. A simple condition is well characterised and has a clear diagnostic and treatment pathway, so you can do most things by algorithm. A complex condition, such as mental illness complicated by drug dependency, is unpredictable and not amenable to management by algorithm. Domain two is the technology. A simple technology, the telephone for example, is dependable, freestanding, cheap and substitutable, meaning that if the manufacturer withdrew from the market, you could easily get another technology that would do the same job. A simple technology generates data that is easy to interpret. A complex technology is one that is not yet interoperable and which is less dependable. For example, it keeps crashing or which does not yet exist. And it may generate data that clinicians cannot interpret or do not trust. Domain three is the value proposition. Technologies in development have both supply side value, that is potential for return on investment, and demand side value, that is benefits to patients and the healthcare provider. 
A simple value proposition has a well-justified business case and demonstrable potential for benefit in terms of health technology assessment studies, that is, efficacy, safety and cost-effectiveness. In a complex value proposition, the business case for developing the technology is implausible or rests on unverifiable assumptions, or the results of health technology assessment studies are unavailable or contested. Domain 4 is the intended adopters of the technology. In a simple situation, intended users, that is staff and patients, are able and willing to use the technology and they can be easily trained to do so. Using the technology does not upset or threaten them. In a complex situation, intended users lack the capability or willingness to learn to use the technology, perhaps because it's a threat to their identity. For example, the person who won't wear a pendant alarm because it makes them feel old. Domain five is the organization or organizations. In a simple situation, all participating organizations have great leadership and a clear and realistic vision for the benefits the technology will bring. Furthermore, people in the organisations want the technology and will be able to fit it in with their routines and ways of working. And there's a budget that can be allocated for setting up and monitoring the new technology supported service. Things get complex when one or more of the organisations lacks leadership, doesn't wish to change or has no available budget, or when the technology requires significant disruptive changes to hardwired organisational routines. More complex still is the technological solution that promises to generate savings in organisation A if only staff in organisation B can be persuaded to put time into using the technology. Domain 6 is the wider system. If this domain is simple, there will be a clear policy push for the technology to be introduced with relevant levers and incentives. The technology will have regulatory approval and be endorsed by the relevant professional body. But if the wider system domain is complex, there may be a top-down directive to change, but no funding, no regulatory approval, and a hostile or lukewarm response from the professional body. Finally, domain seven is adaptation over time. In a simple situation, the technology and the care pathway are, at least to some extent, adaptable and future-proof, and the organisation has a high degree of resilience to external shocks and setbacks. In a complex situation, the technology and the service model are implemented rigidly and mechanically by an organisation that lacks resilience. When that happens, even if the programme is successfully implemented in the short term, it's unlikely to survive long term. It's easy to say that the best way to improve the success rate of technology projects in health and social care is to reduce complexity in all these different domains. The problem is health and care projects are inherently complex. We can't, for example, tell people not to have drug dependency if they also have mental health problems. We can't wave a magic wand and give all service organisations outstanding leadership and a coherent vision for the future. We can't tell policymakers to make sure they back all of our priorities. Here's what we can do. First, we can assess the level of complexity in any project we're planning to take on. Even if we can't make the project simple, we can at least be clear where the uncertainties and interdependencies are likely to lie. Second, we can try to reduce complexity in as many domains as we can. For example, whilst extended functionality may be technically achievable, it may have implications for usability or embedding in work routines perhaps go for the gadget with fewer bells and whistles. Third, we should learn to run with complexity using the principles of complex adaptive systems. Create an overall vision for the project and encourage people to pull together to make it happen. Avoid rigid command and control management. Create incentives and make funding available, but leave frontline staff to work out the details of how to deliver. Respond adaptively as the programme in context evolves. For example, by collecting and reflecting on emerging data and harnessing human creativity. And watch out for scope creep, something that organically evolving projects are prone to. Let me summarise. Technology projects in health and social care have a very high failure rate. 
Mostly they fail because we don't take sufficient account of complexity, that is, aspects of the condition, the technology or the programme that are dynamically changing and unpredictable. Complexity can and usually does occur across multiple domains, which means that the dream of a new technology-supported service is difficult to achieve in practice. Sometimes we can reduce complexity, but more often we need to learn to run with it by using flexible, adaptive approaches that allow human agents to generate their own local solutions. This is not, of course, a guaranteed formula for success, but I hope it gives you some ideas for improving the chances that your technology project will succeed. <laughs>